So analysis paralysis. Now, not only is this a tongue twister for me to say, but it's right up there as one of the biggest killers of creativity and self-improvement in modern society. If you've ever been swarmed by too many choices and struggled with not knowing which direction you should go, well, you're in the right place. In this video, we're gonna explore what analysis paralysis is, why it happens, and most importantly, how you can overcome it so that you can make more confident decisions in the future. So if you've ever found yourself stuck in the loop of overthinking, well, this video is for you. Are you ready? Let's go. Now, if you've clicked on this video, then I highly doubt you need me to explain what analysis paralysis is. But for the handful of people who have no idea what I'm talking about, let's define what analysis paralysis actually is. It's that frustrating state where we find ourselves stuck in a loop of overthinking, where we are endlessly analyzing the pros and cons and feel unable to move forward. Essentially, it's the enemy of productivity and progress. If you ever found yourself unable to choose a movie to watch, a restaurant to dine at, or perhaps settle on a career path, that is analysis paralysis in action. Let's look at some quick real world examples. Imagine you're trying to buy a new smartphone. You start researching, comparing features, reading reviews, and before you know it, days have passed and you're no closer to making a decision. Or consider a creative project like writing a book. You might get caught up in all the planning of every little detail, the world building and character development, but you struggle to actually get writing. Now, if you're thinking to yourself at this very moment that none of that sounds great, then I'm inclined to agree with you. So then that naturally begs the question, how did we get to this point? What actually causes us to have analysis paralysis? Let's delve deeper into some other factors that can contribute to analysis analysis paralysis since recognizing these causes can help you to better understand why you might find yourself stuck in this endless loop. Number one, perceived social pressure. Sometimes we just get too worried about what others will think about decisions. The fear of public judgment can lead us to overthink and delay us from making choices. This could also be thought of as succumbing to peer pressure or groupthink. Navigating your way around this requires you to reframe your perspective. Remind yourself that your decisions are primarily for your own benefit and not to please others. Focus on what aligns with your values and your goals. Now, this is going to require you to implement a certain amount of assertiveness in your interactions with people. You need to have the ability to stand by your choices even if they don't align with everyone else's opinions. Now this is going to build your confidence in decision making and allow you to move forward despite what others may think of you. Number two, overestimating consequences. We all tend to magnify the potential negative outcomes of our decisions. The fear of making a catastrophic mistake can just stop us dead in our tracks. Sometimes all we need to do is to take a step back and objectively assess the actual impact of our decisions. Are the potential consequences as severe as you imagine? Uh, often they're not. Sometimes what I like to do is to think about what the worst possible outcomes could be and then I write them out. This is an uncomfortable exercise to do, but I promise it's well worth it. This is gonna quickly highlight what concerns require your attention and which ones you can just throw out. Now, after doing this exercise, I tend to find that the worst possible outcome is actually not as detrimental or as likely to occur as I had originally built up in my mind. Number three, decision fatigue. Now, if you're anything like me, I have to make dozens of critical decisions every day at my job. Now, making too many decisions in a short span can exhaust your mental resources, which in turn leads to fatigue and inevitably turns into paralysis when you are faced with yet another decision to make. I have to deal with this every day I come home from a long day at work and decide to work on this channel. There are just too many options surrounding what I need to do next and I get stuck not knowing which way I should go. Now, to avoid falling into this trap, I try to prioritize and batch my decisions. I group similar decisions together and tackle them in a single session. This minimizes decisions decision fatigue. Now this can be done throughout the day, but where this really becomes powerful is when your mind is already fried from a full day. Now I like to use an app or a computer program called Millinote where I keep up with the videos on my channel. If I don't know what needs to be done first, I can open Millinote and see what section is building up to be the largest. Now generally, this is a trigger for me to focus on that section for the evening, such as whether I need to script, film, or edit. Now if you find yourself too far gone and tired to sit down and do even more work after a long day of work, then try resetting your mind with a triggering mechanism. Now for for me, when I find myself struggling to get started to work on this channel, I walk into my office and I immediately, I'm gonna get hit with my trigger. It's more like I run into it, like I bang into it with my feet because it's right there on the floor. I can see it right here. In fact, let me go get it and I'll show you. This right here, if I don't get to work right away, all right, I walk in the office and this is immediately sitting on the floor almost to where I trip on it every time. So if I don't start working on the channel right away, scripting, editing, filming, <laughs> I'm either gonna sit down and work on the channel or I'm gonna throw this heavy weight vest on and go walk around the block just to get the blood flowing. Now, not only does this get my blood pumping again, but it also gives me a chance to clear my mind of just all the stuff that's been building up throughout the day. Now, I only recently started doing this in the past two to three months, but every single time I do it, I gained a 
boost of energy and mental clarity. This is really one of the most dramatic changes I've made in recent memory and I highly recommend it. Get the blood flowing after a long day. Number four, lack of information. Now, on the flip side of having too many decisions to make, having too little information can also be overwhelming. Without a solid foundation or understanding of what your boss, spouse, or friends need you to do, you might struggle to make an informed decision. I actually find overcoming this form of paralysis to be fairly simple. As undramatic as it sounds, really all you need to do is either request additional information or inform whoever gave you the task that you can't move forward without further guidance. So right about now, many of you are probably just rolling your eyes claiming that this is easier said than done. You're probably thinking that if you do this, your boss is going to fire you on the spot for your incompetence. But first of all, if your boss fires you for requesting clarification on the task, then your boss is incompetent or the company you work for is toxic and you need to go find a new job. Now, second, we live in the real world where people don't just yell at you for asking reasonable questions. Supervisors and those close to us would rather we understand the task fully instead of pretending like we understand and sitting on the thing just not doing anything with it. If you're unsure of what is expected of you, don't hesitate to reach out for more information. Number five, perfectionism. The pursuit of perfectionism can be paralyzing. Wanting every detail to be flawless can prevent you from taking any action at all. Now this was a major contributor in what took me so long to move forward on this YouTube channel. I wanted my videos to have like a certain vibe to them. I wanted the audio to sound great, the editing to be slick, and the scripts to just be tight. Unfortunately, trying to pursue this level of perfection hindered me from taking any action at all, and it really hurt the growth of my channel early on. What I should have done was to aim for excellence rather than perfection. My videos needed to be good, not perfect, especially as a beginner just starting out. I now understand that minor imperfections are just a natural part of the process. As long as we learn from our mistakes and shortcomings, we are making good progress down the right path. Now, on that same note, we should celebrate any progress that we make along the way. Even if your accomplishments aren't flawless, that's okay because at least you're moving in the right direction. Pursuing improvement is more than most people ever work towards, and this should be celebrated, so keep that in mind next time you feel like you're falling short again. Number six, complexity of options. Sometimes the issue we run into doesn't necessarily revolve around too many or too little options. It can also be that the choices that we have to make are intricate or involve multiple variables. Now, this one closely ties into our previous pain points surrounding perfectionism and that we can't make a move because the things we want to do are more complex than we are currently equipped to handle. This doesn't have to be a showstopper by any means. In situations like this, just break down the problem into the sum of its smaller components and address them one by one. This can make the overall process not only more manageable, but also achievable. For example, when I first started filming and editing for this channel, I would look at people like Ali Abdal and think to myself, and there is no way I can film, speak, and edit like him. It felt like this daunting task and I didn't have enough time in the day to learn all of the things required to make my videos as good as his. Now clearly this was the wrong mindset to have. It took Ollie and others like him years to hone their craft to where they are today. All I had to do was improve a little bit each video and that would eventually get me to where I needed to go. Maybe one day I decide I want to learn a new editing technique or I wanted to improve my scripting or practice talking with my hands more where it's not so distracting but you know it makes you feel more engaged with what it is that I'm saying. But what happens is that you just can't go any further. You've tried everything you possibly can, but you just can't seem to figure out this complex issue. Now, this is where you turn to the experts for help. There are so many free resources out there like Google, YouTube, Facebook groups. There's also paid resources like Skillshare to help you get spun up on what's holding you back. Yes, I get it. Complex problems can bring your solid momentum to an abrupt stop, but there are just too many free resources out there for you to just be held down forever. Number seven, fear of missing out. This one is so annoying because of how sneaky it is. It's just that little voice in the back of your mind whispering to you that you'll miss out on something better if you stay on the path that you're on. Soon enough, you'll find yourself not committing to a particular choice because you're unsure if you're making the right decision or not. Now, like most fears on this list, I've struggled with this one too. I often feel like the fear of missing out is intertwined with the sunk cost fallacy, meaning not only am I afraid to commit to this new thing because I'm not sure it'll work out, but I'm also afraid to let go of everything I've worked so hard for in order to pursue this other path. You know, the most recent example of this for me was when I made the decision to switch a career as a mechanical engineer and project manager to pursuing a full-time career with the military. You know, all the education I had done up until that point, well, it was in preparation to have a civilian career. And I cannot express enough how much I struggled to find that first job out of school. But once I had it, I put everything I had into it. Now fast forward almost 10 years and I had a choice to make. Do I stay the course and keep my safe job as an engineer or do I take a chance down a different path and see where it takes me? Now to help me to make this decision, I defined specific criteria that the choice had to meet before I decided to commit. You know, things like uh, future opportunities, long-term benefits, pay and quality of life for my family. These were all considered and weighed. Now, after I had done this, I was able to feel more confident that I wasn't 
missing better opportunities by leaving my old career behind and pursuing this new chapter. Number one, consider the cost of inaction. When you're faced with a tough decision, you should first decide what this is going to cost you if you do nothing at all. Often the cost of not taking action can be greater than the potential risk of making the wrong choice. Keeping this perspective in mind can help motivate you to move forward. Staying indecisive, well, that could lead to missed opportunities and stagnation. Now for me, the cost of not pursuing this YouTube channel was extremely high. I'd be missing out on the opportunity to build something that I'm passionate about. I'd always regret it and I'd always wonder what if. Number two, set realistic expectations. Now, along those same lines, you also have to understand that not every decision has life altering consequences. Most choices are reversible and can be adjusted over time. Just give yourself a little grace and allow yourself to learn and adapt as you go along. I had to accept that I wasn't gonna have all the answers when starting this channel. I was gonna make mistakes and not be perfect right out the gate. I wasn't gonna miss out on subscribers or views because I misspelled a few words here and there. You know, possibly the music selection could have been a little better. Maybe my camera misfocus or underexposed me here and there. You know, either way I was and in a lot of ways still am just starting out and it's okay to make a few mistakes. As long as I learn from them, then I'm making forward progress. Number three, focus on the process. Try shifting your focus from just the final outcome and instead put all your mental effort into the process. Focus on all the tools and steps you need to achieve the thing that's holding you back. If you follow the thoughtful process, the outcome is less likely to be the wrong one. Now, I've taken this approach to heart thanks in no small part to Ali Abdal. His focus during his early videos was to publish a consistent one to two videos per week and try to improve a little bit each time. This has been a template I'm currently trying to replicate for myself and this has given me extreme clarity not only what's important for me to achieve my goals but it also shows me how to get there. Number four, embrace uncertainty. Life is inherently uncertain and there's no way to predict every outcome. Embrace the unknown as part of the learning process rather than something to fear. This is a mindset shift and it can alleviate a lot of the anxiety you have around making choices. I have no idea if I'm making all the right choices with every script that I write, with each video I produce, with every title that I write and all the thumbnails I generate. I can't control if people watch or if they find the information in each video useful to them. I do know that if I don't put content out there, then I'll never gather enough data to know where I need to improve and to focus my attention. Number five, visualize positive outcomes. Instead of constantly fixating on negative outcomes, try instead to envision the positive results that would come from your decision. Visualizing success can boost your confidence and help to counteract fear. Now, admittedly, this is pretty cliche, but there are plenty of reasons to maintain a positive outlook, regardless of how daunting the task may seem. When making a decision, if your mind goes to a negative space, the results you'll come up with will inherently be negative. You know, anytime I feel like my videos were underperforming, you know, I'd find myself Myself sulking and wondering, well, why am I even doing all this? What's the point of it all? I could just quit now and save myself a ton of time and frustration. These are all the negative solutions I'd come up with to the problems I was having. There's no reason to be this hard on yourself, especially when the potential for future positive outcomes far outweighs the current frustrations that you're feeling right now. Number six, seek perspective. It's possible that being afraid of making the wrong choice could easily be solved by talking to friends, coworkers, mentors, even family members about your concerns. You know, often getting an external perspective can offer you clarity and reassurance. They also might be able to share their own experience in overcoming similar fears that you're having. Number seven, learn from your mistakes. When you do make a choice that doesn't turn out as expected, focus on what you can learn from it. Analyze the situation objectively to identify lessons that can inform future decisions. Every failed business I've tried over the past few years has given me more tools to use when building up this channel. Yes, sometimes these were expensive lessons, but I I didn't walk away with my hands empty. Pretty much everything I needed to learn to get the ball rolling on this channel was learned from my failed t-shirt businesses, fidget spinner sales, and countless others I don't feel like going into right now. Remember, overcoming analysis paralysis is an ongoing journey that involves building decision-making skills and developing a proactive mindset. Each situation might require a tailored approach, so just be patient with yourself as you experiment with these strategies. And over time, you'll become more adept at navigating complex decisions and moving forward with confidence. Analysis paralysis, guys, is just, it's just a hurdle. And with the strategies that we've explored today, you will hopefully you're now equipped with the tools that you need to overcome it. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and possibly subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, y'all. Take it easy.